it's Spurgeon. Well, if there is one thing that we talk a lot about, it's what I call the shortest, most complete, one line or two line scripture in the Bible that will give you the entire Bible and all of discipleship and all of salvation golden away. <laughs> And it's not John 3.16. But if you think about it, if you really get into it, if you really kind of like, you know, understand what it's saying, and, you know, I have done Bible studies on this, and I still go around the country at times telling people about it. But Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells you to trust in the Lord. So you could start there and you take a little piece of it and you understand what trust is and then who you should trust and who in or what you should trust and all that stuff. So you trust in the Lord with all your heart. So with all your heart, emotions, being, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you got to figure out who the Lord is and you got to figure out what trust is. So, you know, faith is mixed in and in order to know the Lord, you got to have some kind of relationship. So you find out that you got to have a relationship in order to be able to trust because faith trust is the action of faith so you got to put it in some place so it has to be a directive thing in order to go forward so it has to be a action word and it's a verb so it's in putting it into the lord who is the one who's going to do what with what you're going to do with all your heart it says trust the lord with all your heart so you're talking about the heart so you're talking about salvation you kind of get into the whole relationship and you have to develop that in order to be in the heart and develop that with the lord and be able to trust Leaning out to your own understanding, of course, you're getting back out of the idea that you already know what you're going to do because then you've got to trust in his understanding and not your own. So you got to go with him in order to trust him. You have to not be way of thinking your own thoughts, but way of thinking his own thoughts so that you have to give it to him, be able to trust in him so that you have to be able to know oh, that your heart is going towards him in a way that you should trust him so that you would not be directed by your own thoughts, but you would be directed by his thoughts. In all your ways, always <laughs> acknowledging him so you have to acknowledge him in everything that you're doing and everything you're thinking and everything you're being and everything you're going and everywhere you're doing and everything you want and everything you be and everything that you have and everything that you will and everything that you think you're going to do so that all your plans will always be trusting back in the lord you have to have that relationship in order to develop that trust that you have to go back to god in order to have it in your heart so that you'd be doing as well as acknowledging him in all your ways so to be able to see that you could trust in him so you're putting your faith in the person with whom is able to know better for you what he should do with you than you should know what you should do with yourself in order that you could be able to trust in him because if you aren't you aren't doing what he said to do which was trusting the lord with all your heart leaning on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledging that and he will direct your path so it looks like that he would direct your path because he'd bring you back to salvation if you don't have salvation then you'd already go back to the place where you begin at the beginning which is trusting the lord which is putting your faith back into god which is the lord who is the person that you want to put your faith in with your heart so that you'll be able to turn it back over to him in order for him to direct you because you don't want to lean in your own understanding you don't want to trust in him in other ways that you would not have faith in that which he knows better than you do so you're not thinking of your own understanding you're using his understanding so that you have the mind of Christ but you'll be able to put into him all the salvation issues that you have that you can determine whether or not you should walk with him talk with him be with him have him lead you and go with him all the way through salvation to the end sanctification to the redemption to the actual long-term process got it <laughs> <laughs> Put it simply, just trust him. Trust and obey. But in Spurgeon, <laughs> try that one out. <laughs> See if you can say that one. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 like that. Of mine arm shall they trust. Isaiah. In seasons of severe trial, the Christian has nothing on earth that he can trust to, and is therefore compelled to cast himself on his God alone. When his vessel is on its beam's end and no human deliverance can avail, he must simply and entirely trust himself to the providence of God and care of God. Happy storm that wrecks a man on such a rock as this, O oh, blessed hurricane that drives the soul to God and God alone. There is no getting at our God something because of the multitude of our friends, but when a man is so poor and so friendless, so helpless that he has nowhere else to turn, he flies into his father's arms and is blessedly clasped therein. When he is burdened with troubles so pressing and so peculiar that he cannot tell them to any but his God, he may be thankful for them, for he will learn more of his Lord than at that time than any other time in his life. O tempest-tossed believer, 
It is a happy trouble that drives you to your Father. Now that you have only your God to trust, to see that you put all your faith and confidence in Him, dishonor not your Lord and Master by unworthy doubts and fears, but be strong in faith and giving glory to God. Show the world that thy God is worth 10,000 worlds to you. Show rich men how rich you are in your poverty when the Lord is your helper. Show the strong man how strong you are in your weakness when underneath you are the everlasting arms. Now is the time for feats of faith and valiant exploits. Be strong and very courageous, and the Lord thy God shall certainly, as surely as he built the heavens and the earth, glorify himself in your weakness and magnify in his might in the midst of your distress. The grandeur of the ark of heaven would be spoiled if the sky was supported by a single visible column and your faith would lose its glory if it rested on anything discernible by the carnal eye. May the Holy Spirit give you to rest in Jesus this closing day and this day of the month that he gives to you to rest in him, consoled by the ability to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And the rest you'll figure out as you rest in Him.